Welcome back to On The Slab, your horror show from the Dynamo Podcast Network. Um, tonight is a little bit of a different episode because my partner in crime is not with me tonight, Ian, the Dynamo Kelly. So stepping in tonight with me is a special guest who we are going to introduce, and that's Greg Flanagan from Retrotainment. How are you, my man? What's happening, brother? Thank you very much for stepping into the into the, the slab at such short notice I think uh, always ready <laughs> absolutely and thanks to Ted for letting you uh, like let unchaining you and letting you out off the he's, leash for a bit you know he's, wait, he's waiting for that transfer fee I know well he'll be waiting because uh, <laughs> I don't know I have no money <laughs> now what the Pepsi will do him <laughs> yeah or a football special huh? <laughs> yeah we'll give him one of them <laughs> so uh, yeah I had planned to do an old uh, episode on a film on a film but we're going to hold off on that until Ian is back, and that will be hopefully next week. So we'll we thought we'd save that for another day. <laughs> yeah. So we talk because myself and yourself talk an awful lot about horror now, you know, like it's which is great. Like, don't get me, it's fantastic. And we, I said, what, what would we, what can we do at kind of short notice that we couldn't know we could have a good chat about? And I was like, well, why don't we talk about our favorite vampires in films? Everyone's seen at least one of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And everyone likes at least one, you know. Um, Hello, Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You you should do a video on your own about the Twilight films. I'll really do an old TikTok video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so get, get Ted to reenact some of them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so, uh, yeah, there's no Twilight vampires in our list tonight. So, basically, what we've done, we've both picked five of our favorite vampires. And our films really so we can just have a little chat about them because like that's the difference between retrotainment and on the slab uh, retrotainment is our big sister of course and um you just referred to me as a female <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> um <laughs> I'd, I'd like to be removed <laughs> i'll edit you out don't worry <laughs> <coughs> but anyway um so of course retrotainment gives you all the info of the of the film whereas myself and Ian we'll just chat and we'll briefly brush over uh, you know a film and it's more about what the film means to us that in the, and that's what makes both shows unique I think which is great and that's how we're able to kind of cross brand a lot which is gonna happen a lot more I think anyway well I hope it is anyway. definitely you know? I could I say this has been my first of many I'd say it will be Absolutely. Especially the fact that like horror will be my number one go to movies. Yeah. Same as yourself. Probably same Absolutely. as Ian. Yeah. Ted's Ted loves horrors, but I don't know if they'd be his overly go to. He just loves mu- movies full yeah. stop, you know, and that's you can't beat He wa- he watches anything. Well so I'm the same, but if I'm sitting here by myself now like I am tonight, mm. when I'm finished with yourself, I'll throw on a horror movie and then I go to bed. Yeah, you should watch Begotten. Remember did you watch it yet? No. <laughs> there you go. I've haven't had a haven't had a chance. Although I do have a free uh, YouTube video voucher that they gave me. There you go. So I might use it on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me know before you do. Anyway, so <laughs> what we're doing is we're pick, we've are we picked five each, as I said. Um, a couple of them actually match up together, don't they? Yeah, well, there's some of them you'd have to, though, really. Yeah. I have, so, I have a couple of honourable mentions as well, if they don't make your list for when we get to it. <laughs> right, okay. Um, we'll t- tell you what then start off with your list since you're the, the guest I well we go we want to go one each one each actually yeah so you go first and back and forth that way I went my number five is they're in no real order yeah was uh, Dracula Untold Luke that's, Evans that's a great film it's, it's fairly underrated isn't it oh it's clear like, I went to see it in the cinema and I remember coming out of it and uh, there was people giving out about the movie and this, that, and the other. And I was like, Wait. what more do you want from a movie? Yeah. You know what I mean, the story was almost solid, perfectly yeah. solid. The action was brilliant. The it had everything. Artwork. Yeah. What, what more could you want? Yeah, I know. Um, I know. Maybe it probably wasn't as... It was. I thought it was, it was horror, but more action. Action, action yeah. horror. Maybe people were like, mm, it wasn't horror enough. I don't know. Do you know what way it kind of reminded me of the way it started was from dusk till dawn? Yeah. It yeah. was kind of nothing, nothing, nothing. And then all of a sudden it was like, yeah, let's go. Yeah. I loved it. And and, and of course, Luke Evans is a is a nice I, looking fella. So what I mean by that is you, ha- you have the, the good looks, 
because yeah. we've talked about this before I, there's there's different types of um, portrayals yeah. of vampires yeah. there's the there's the you know the interview with the vampire type fucking vampire where it's they're gorgeous looking and it's all this and then you have your your, your uh, twilight shite vampire stuff you know, they don't like, count no right and then you have the kind of vampires that I like and I think you like as well for yeah. the most part is which is our filthy filthy animals you know oh yeah that's they're the way yeah, boards. <laughs> yeah that's the way vampires should be because they're infected with a fucking with something and lost so, for blood <laughs> yeah so that's why to be honest with you there's no none of that real well there's one of the you know though that kind of romantic type uh dracula's on my list but uh yeah. for well, the most it part can't, it, it can't not be <laughs> yeah exactly but anyway back to dracula unt- untold isn't it unbound yeah. untold it would, you know, you wouldn't. It had that kind of feel that it could have had a fucking, like a, a, like a sequel, didn't it? It it definitely did. I don't know whether it fell through or not, because yeah. the movie made money and right. like they finished it perfectly to go. We have a chance now. Yeah, that would, that it now. would have been awesome to see him as Dracula, like proper bad, bad Dracula, like you know what I mean? Yeah. Now I don't know whether Luke Evans might have turned it down, or the movie fell through, or they just decided we'll just leave it at that. Mm. Especially because I think the same company moved on to the Last Witch Hunter with Vin Diesel. Oh yeah, God. Shortly after that, and that tanked badly. That's because fucking Vin Diesel was in it, man. Well, he's he put his name to anything now, and it seems to be making money, but that didn't, and it was I thought it was terrible. I didn't, but, wasn't, um, wasn't into that at all. <laughs> now, may, maybe we might get a sequel when they, if they can lock down a solid story, but mm. I think now at this stage, it's been seven years now, so. Yeah, and I remember when that came out, I was like, I need to see that film, because it was just like, I liked, again, it was a different take on it. But of course, don't forget, the original kind of uh, Dracula was, he was a, a soldier. Yeah. Do you know, it, so. I like, the, I like the fact that they moved him as Vlad the Impaler. Yeah, yeah. That was that was it was a brilliant idea to go. Yeah, let's do this. No, I know it's been done before, but yeah, uh, but, the way they portrayed it in this one was was brilliant. I Luke know. Evans is brilliant in everything. Yeah, he is actually. He um, play he plays that arsehole looking cocky fucker very well. Yeah, well, again, it's yeah, it's it's all about facial expressions, isn't it? As well. Yeah, he has so, a face that you look like you want to slap. <laughs> yeah, I would slap it. Yeah, but he'd probably bite me neck or something, you know. Yeah, <laughs> or he used that big sword he has. <laughs> okay, so yeah, well, that's a, that's a good start, man. That's a really good film, and I'm glad I didn't didn't put it in my list. But it is a a great film. Oh, it's it's hard. Like I changed this list when I texted you earlier at about eleven o'clock. Yeah, I changed that list about ten times in the process. <laughs> I <coughs> oh, excuse me, sorry. I yeah, uh, just changed it once. I think. Oh so. no. I've, I've moved stuff in, taken it back, changed it back, moved it around again. <laughs> Nightmare right. situation. <laughs> right, well, we'll go with my... my... Uh, top number five. Again, but they're not in any order, really. Although yeah. number one will be. I presume that's the same with you, though. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, um, I well, had changed one, didn't I? Yeah. It, yes. It so number five is Shadow of the Vampire. This is such a clean. As I said about the last one, this is really underrated. Yeah. Like this, this had Will, Willem Dafoe and John Malkovich in it. And like, that's an instant hit right there. Yeah. The two lads are fucking deadly. And Eddie Izzard was is, actually deadly in it as well. Is, is Max Shrek is in it as well, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And that, well, he Willem Dafoe plays Max Shrek as uh, Nosferatu. That's the great. That's yeah. Ah. Yeah. Uh, it's it's quality. Like I haven't seen that in thing. When you said it to me, I was like, I'm gonna go watch that in the next couple yeah. of days. I went to see that when I came out in the cinema, and it was just like, because we myself, me mate, we'd heard of it. It was on in the OFC, Irish Film Centre. I don't know where that is. <laughs> uh, in Temple Bar, it's it's uh, it, it used to be like a really fancy type of a film place, you know. You don't need get they certain are. types of films. A lot of foreign films now, but that was the only place at the time that was showing it. So we had to go into it. You know, you have to, if I remember correctly, at least one of them, one of us has to be a, a member of there. You know what I mean? Oh Jesus! But it, it was great seeing it that like that. It was, you know, and the, the fact that it's a film about a film. Yeah, it's not. It's never really done. No. So. Uh, uh, 
yeah, it's, it's you very rarely see it. Yeah, and getting on, getting as you say, getting that ensemble of a cast in was fucking deadly, like you know. But like John Malkovich was probably at the top of his powers at that stage. Yeah, like he's a very clinically underrated actor as well. Yeah, actually, uh, funny enough, I've only start really started to appreciate him in, in later years. You so know? they made a mo- They made a movie about him. About being him, yeah. <laughs> yeah, being John Malkovich. What a weird yeah. film. Oh, it's it's that's like watching the Truman Show crossed with fucking the borrowers and everything else. Yeah, it's, it's a strange bad. movie. Yeah, good though. Yeah, oh, I, I I remember. I think we watched it for a project in school. No way. We watched that in the Truman Show as part of the film studies for the leaving sir. <laughs> yeah, mad. So yeah, that would be number number five because I well before we go on, Willem Dafoe as a vampire is. Fucking awesome. Does he play, not, doesn't he play a vampire in something else as well? Is it Daybreakers? I think he does. I've never seen it now, but I think he does. Oh, he's I such wouldn't. a good actor, man. <laughs> such a yeah. good actor. Yeah, I won't go near it now. <laughs> such um, a good actor, man. Like, oh, I, don't, yeah. I don't know if you remember. Like, you've, I presume you've seen him in Spider Man when he was in Spider Man as the Green Yeah, he was, Yeah, he was brilliant. What really pissed me off about that was, and I know we're veering away from horror now, but that's okay. Um, what pissed me off about that was he looked like a fucking uh, Power Rangers villain or something. Oh, it was, just, Whereas, the, it was so comic up. Yeah, well, uh, but uh, like a, his face alone, his face could have done the Green Goblin's face. Yeah, that's yeah, why. I, that's why I thought they they cast him for that because they wouldn't need to do an awful lot of stuff with his face. Like. Did you notice though? Did you see Ant Man? The first one, yeah. Did Did you think Michael Douglas looked exactly like Willem Dafoe did in? In Spider Man, yeah, he very, was, very, very it was, similar. It was really weird, yeah, it was. Uh, but uh, <laughs> now he's a very good actor, Willem Dafoe, yeah, and yeah. I love him in that film. And because, like, if you're like, if you remember the state of the story, there was rumors that Max Shrek was an actual vampire, you know, and they play that out deadly, they just play that out. It was, it was just good camera work all yeah. around, good yeah. screenwriting, like, that's where movies are being let down nowadays. Yeah. There's oh we'll we'll just throw this in and it doesn't make any sense and you're like, Well what what, what was that about? Like mm. and you these notice, things were these things were taught out. And you notice now if 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 someone tries to be original, um it gets shunned. Oh yeah, oh, it's flapped. <laughs> yeah, like so I mean you know how my my hatred of fucking remakes and that kind of stuff. Really? I thought you liked remakes. Mm, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna pretend like the only remake yeah. I think that I really, really like was the Floyd. That mm-hmm. that's actually probably superior. Yeah, it is. Actually, well, no, maybe, maybe the thing as well. The original, the, the well, not the original, the seventy-eight, the seventy-eight thing. Yeah, yeah. With Kurt Russell, that's a remake of an older film. An older film, yeah, but it, um, it, it's it kind of I don't it know came it, from outer space or something. So. Yeah, but it, I think it, I think it made it itself its own, if you know what I mean. Yeah, oh, yeah. John Carpenter came in and just went, "That's that's mine now." Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't pass that now, was it? A well, technically person. it is. Technically, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah um, but the fly, the fly, Evil Dead was a good one. Well, yeah. Oh, you have, oh, Would you believe we still haven't watched that version yet? Oh, it's on yeah. Prime. It's great. Oh, was a killer. Yeah. Man, I watched that. Though. So uh, yeah, so that was my one. That was interview with the va- or not interview with the vampire. That's not in the list. Um, that's what you swapped. That's what I swapped. Yeah. <laughs> Because I was just like, well, what's my last one? Blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, no, actually, think about it, Carl. You like Shadow of the Vampire, you know what I mean? So Put it uh, in. <laughs> yeah, put it in. Right, so what was next for you? This is one I think that made both of our lists. Blade. Oh, yeah. How could how could you not like Blade? Absolutely love Blade. Oh, love it. This is like even... everyone, everyone that does be like, oh, Deadpool's Marvel's R-rated movie and whatnot. Yeah, you're forgetting about one here. Uh, Blade was Blade was quality. The cast and Wesley Snipes as Blade was brilliant. Uh, Stefan Dorff as as Deacon Frost. Yeah, he, he was probably the best bad guy that you could have asked for. And around uh, yeah, uh, on screen at that time, absolutely. Yeah, Chris he, Christopherson as as Whistler. Well, yeah, I mean, say Welker. <laughs> That's Resident Evil. Yeah, that oh Wesker, yeah, like, yeah, um, well, as Whistler, yeah. Yeah, so that that was on my list as well. So we can kind of both talk about this, like blah blah blah, like yeah. you know. Like I remember watching that. I went when I was in primary school. We watched it, 
and I said over in one of my, one of the lads' houses, and we got it there. It was his favorite movie. Mm-hmm. First time I seen it, it was fucking brilliant. Um, oh, again, I went to see it in the pictures. <laughs> the sound, the soundtrack as well. And I wouldn't be into like techno music no. and all, but, but that, that, that scene where they're, where they're in the rave and the blood starts coming down. Brilliant. And it, and it just kicks off then. And you just see a man flying into the middle of the floor and you're like, oh yeah. It's you can just tell what this is going to be. And, and the and way he the way he just fucks up vampires all the time is just the way he does it is amazing. And his car. Yeah. Oh. And, and, but again, as you're saying, everything about him is just cool, you know? Yeah. And then even the second one was, was deadly as well. I, I, I really enjoyed the second one and yeah. like, I know it gets a lot of hate it doesn't get as much hate as number three does but uh, I really enjoyed the second one like Ron Perlman and all is in the second one yeah um, but like the, the the design of the vampire where it slits down here and it opens up like a like a sucky or sucker like a, thing like a, yes crazy yeah, I thought that I thought that was fucking deadly it, it, they did it well actually they did it well yeah. you know considering um there wasn't a laugh from that, an awful lot of CGI at that, story, at that stage. It was again, that was back to animatronics again, like, yeah. and and a lot of makeup. Well, uh, funny enough, do you remember in the first one when Deacon Frost kind of kind of cuts in half, and you see all the, the blood kind of bringing them back together? Yeah, it's that's really savage. bad looking. It's it's but like when you think of it, I, I give it a, yeah, we will give the like supposed to give it a pass because it's it's a good such a good film. But when you yeah. look at it today compared to what they could possibly do now, you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, yeah. And then, like, when you see that the, the skeletons coming out of the, the mouths of the, the, of the comedian vampires. off. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, there's the fat guy in the tub with the light. Oh, well, what was his name again? Pearl or something, wasn't it? Yeah. And he's just shining the light on him. <laughs> there's certain things, like, even when the vampire, like, it doesn't make sense that the vampire got set on fire and was still alive Yeah. at the start. You know, oh, yeah, he man, bites yeah. you one. And then he gets thrown off. He loses his arm and all. But it's, mm. you just and give then, them things a pass and let and it go. It's, one other thing that was strange was: Do you remember when he realised that his ma was with Deacon Frost, and she was kind of trying to seduce him? Did you remember that? His ma. Yeah, Blaze Ma was with Deacon Frost. You know the your woman that's with him. She oh was, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And the fact that she was she was trying to kind of just for the you know to get to get him on side for Deacon, like, and she it was just like yeah that's a bit fucking weird like you know. So what what? <laughs> it's it's just all sorts of messed up. Yeah. But like the even the the same where he has the stuff that you know that he injects into him. Yeah. And he's kicking them and you're like yeah deadly. <laughs> Such deadly. A good. Again, that's do you know what? There's another one. That's an. I know it's it's based on a comic book, right? But it's yeah. more action than horror. Yeah, it's a dark action. What would you yeah. call it? I think it's called black horror or something, did Black horror, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's That's kind it. of like that um, Black Xmas and all them kind of yeah films they fall into. Yeah, like I mean, there's enough um, there's enough vampires in it to be a horror movie, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, you only need one. Yeah. Actually, no, you don't. Twilight gets away, you could get away with that then. No, you need a few more. You need a, you need a few more than that. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> right, we, we won't, so, don't mention the war. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Right, well, since that was both of ours, number four there, You back to you again. So I've uh, I've got a doozy of one here. We go from dusk till dawn. Oh, nice. Yeah, the nice. titty twister. Mm. I, no, I did. I mentioned it earlier on. It's uh, it was like um, Dracula Untold was kind of done in the same fashion as this, where mm. you wouldn't think it's a vampire movie for fifty minutes, and then yeah. all of a sudden it it hits the hits the roof. Yeah. Um, but like George Clooney, who was probably high end level at that stage, Quentin Tarantino, and then Robert Rodriguez obviously directing it. Yeah. Um. Then you had Tom Savini in it. What a man. I love him. Like, I'd say he had to be in it. I'd say to do all the the makeup and all. What was his name in it? Was it Sex God or something like that? Or... Sex Machine. Sex Machine. Yeah. Yeah. And he had to go yeah. on. Was it? He had to go on <clears throat> in his crotch or something. Yeah. No. Well, that was the black guy that had that. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Fake. Yeah, but like at the scene, and then you had Salma Hayek as well. That w- I fell in love with her when I saw that. With the snake. Oh Jesus Christ. 
Yeah. I mean, there's. I mean, that she was absolutely, and she still is absolutely. Amazing. She's probably pushed. She's probably fifty odd now at this stage. Yeah. You look at her going, damn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I saw her on Graham Norton last year or something like that. And she was still looking hot as a fucking. Yeah, around, you know, but... and then all of a sudden she goes from that to a vampire, and you're like, "Yeah, what was that?" I don't know I probably still would even as a vampire. <laughs> totally worth it. Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, so tell me, talk to me about uh, Dustin Dan. <laughs> Ironically, remember I was saying when I seen Blade, I was staying in my friend's house, same friend's house. You serious? Seeing this one, <laughs> I went out. I went up to Golden Discs in Bray when it used to be up the town where CEX is. And bought this a couple of days later. No way. That's how much I loved it. Wow. Um, I went there and I bought it, and it came in a tin uh, case with a, and it opened at the top. Remember, like um, Reservoir Dogs, that it used to come in the gas can. Yeah, yeah. It was like it was like that, but it had the titty twister on the front of it. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I loved Harvey Keitel on that as well. Actually, he was cool. I know just, he was a bit of a. We... Harvey Keitel Harvey Keitel comes into these movies and you're like you're just the same character over and over and over yeah. again I like, like him when man. he comes in when he comes in as the cleaner and, and things and you're like what? <laughs> why? Uh, well no Harvey Keitel was a genius uh, the guy outside the titty twist there when he's, uh, he's asking everyone we got pussy we got white pussy black pussy yellow pussy dirty pussy <laughs> <laughs> Dirt. if, you, if you've seen if you have pussy and we don't have it We'll get it. <laughs> and again, the way it all kicks off, and it, uh, when it just all the kicks off, it really kicks off, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. With but it, it also has a um, thing in it. The, it's a Danielle Harris. He won from Cape Fear. Oh, Juliet Lewis. Or Juliet Lewis. Yeah. Danielle yeah. Harris, sorry, that's Halloween. Yeah. Uh, Juliet, Juliet Lewis. Lewis, yeah. She's in it as well. She's young in it. Yeah. Gee, well, I, she was in a lot of those kind of films in the 90s where she was... That kind of, yeah, really young, and that was the appeal of her. You know what I mean? Definitely messed up in the head now. Oh fuck yeah! Well, how Sorry. how bad? Like uh, she would have been messed up after Cape Fear. Robert De Niro's performance in that was, was so stunning. Nice. There's another yeah. one that's probably as good as the fucking original. That's actually a better remake. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I love that. That was uh, one of my favorite films for years. I loved it. Is it is it Gregory Peck or Robert? It's Gregory Peck that's in it. He's in both of them. No, Robert Mitchum's in both of them. Robert Mitchum, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah he's in both of them. Yeah, because he played Katie in the original, didn't he? Yeah. And then he's um, what's he in the in the second? He's the cop. The cop, that's right. Yeah. yeah. He gets all sorts of fucked up. There's that's right. another film we'll have to revisit. Actually, I actually have I have the the two pack collection there, the original and the old and the oh, new cool. one. Cool. Yeah, it's so good. Now all I need is the little Simpsons version to go with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, will we move on from that then? Yeah, we go to your tour. Okay, we have Bram Stoker's Dracula. This, yeah, you know, we've talked about this in the group chat. This is my favorite performance as a Dracula. Right. Gary Oldman is phenomenal. Stunning. Absolutely yeah. stunning. That's there's no other way to describe that performance. It's yeah, that's it was Oscar worthy. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, everything. The only thing, in my opinion, that lets it down is Keanu Reeves. I think. Now, don't get me wrong. I like him in other things. Yeah, I it just, was. He's just a bit weak in that. But other, like, it's not bad enough for me to say, "Oh shit!" Like, you know, it's just. Yeah. I'm just like you're looking at everyone else's act and their fucking arses off, and you're just like. Oh, like you know, yeah. he could have done better, but at that time he was still only trying to establish himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like he so, was. He, if he turned that down, he would have been destroyed. Finished. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He had to take him. So I mean, I love the, I love the, like, even the way they they do the makeup and stuff for Dracula. In this, it's right, near. You're right. talking about now. We're getting into the proper, you know, style of Dracula. I know we still have the romantic thing there, but you know, and and. Do you know something that it's also similar to it's very similar to Dracula Untold when you think okay. about it the story and all yeah yeah like it's well of course the the early part is yeah when he's going out to Transylvania mm. like some of, some of the work on it there where you see him on the train and all and you're like no. yeah it's deadly yeah when, when he when he when doesn't he um 
he uh, disguises himself as a wolf and goes around trying to cause a bit of chaos. Yeah, so mayhem, he can, yeah. yeah, so he can get to uh, Mina, you know. But Very, like he does so. What does he do? He does something to her best friend or something as well, doesn't he? Yeah, he turns her into a vampire. Yeah, he, she becomes a, an attempted bride of Dracula. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's it, mad, like it's cool. It's and uh, what I love as well is, you know, the like his actual true form where he's the old, but like yeah, uh, I love that. I just think that version is cool. And you know when he was it when he cuts the, he cuts him shaving, and you he and he looks he, looks and he looks stiff. That's cool. But like, and then you see him when he gets up from the table, the shadow on the wall at the back is still there. Yeah. And you're like, oh yeah. But like, do you know what I thought? Do you ever see Hotel Transylvania? Yes. The kids when they bring, when, yeah. When, when the, yeah, when they bring the granddad into that, he comes in and Johnny has the thing on his head. And that's all I ever remember yeah. for like <laughs> Gary Oldman and that, when it looks like he has that thing on his head and you're like, <laughs> yeah. It's very good. Yeah, but uh, Gary Oldman's performance in this was absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, um, um, he carried the, the whole movie. Now, the movie's not a bad movie by any stretch of means, but uh, his performance in this was head and shoulders above everyone else. Yeah, and I mean, in a film where you have Anthony Hopkins in it, Jesus, you do forget he's in that. I know, because well, and I mean, for the part that he's playing Van Helsing, it's a, it's 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 almost like it's muted, isn't it? I, he's just he's there and. Then, it's just not and you're like wait wait because I remember when I rewatched it with Zoe there and that's a long ago I looked at it and I was like I forgot he was in this yeah is it Winona Ryder's in it as well isn't it that's right it's a great yeah. cast it's a great yeah. cast um, and like he would have been what's that 92 was it 92 something I think like that out. yeah he went from this then to do or no he just come from Silence of the Lambs yeah so what you this so when you think of it on paper, it's a good follow-up. But when you see the part that he, the little, what, what small part that I feel that he plays in it, yeah, it's not great. Um, like, but uh, you expect a bit more for if you're paying him that much money. But like, to be honest, I think Gary Oldman's performance still would have overshadowed him. Everybody, everybody, yeah. it's almost at the level of. Um, do you remember when uh, when Heath Ledger played the Joker? Yeah. I mean, he had almost destroyed playing Dracula for people, if you know what I mean. Yeah, there's nothing you could do after that. Like, I think Jared Butler went on to try and play him, uh, who wasn't a bad actor either. No, no. In Dracula 2000. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, there was a few other ones that, that went on. Like, there's a few terrible ones. Yes. Very easy to try and make a vampire movie. Uh, look, at, look at Leslie Leslie Nielsen, for fuck's sake. We won't talk about that. Don't speak <laughs> ill of the dead. Yeah. I won't uh, <laughs> yeah, but what I was saying earlier there as well. Then like, you, there's a few honourable mentions you have. Like you could have Eddie Murphy as Vampire in Brooklyn. Vampire in Brooklyn, and that's actually yeah, that's that's a good, that's a it's good a, film actually. Little cry. I used to love that. It used to be on Sky One every so often. <laughs> yeah. uh, I looked it up today on Rotten Tomatoes just to see it get twenty seven percent. I was like, yeah. I don't go with that. I, you know, I never go. I just wanted I, to see. I just wanted to see what came up. Yeah, but I never. <laughs> I never talk about those ratings on my shows for the simple fact that I you know everyone has a different opinion you know what I mean like yeah. you might like a film I might not and so on and so forth so it really is if you're if you want to really find out how good a film is just watch it yourself isn't it really yeah no I'll, I'll never like we do I know we do it on the show mm. uh, just for people to know like yeah, but yeah. We, I wouldn't I wouldn't go off right like as I said to you earlier in here like my favourite film series of horror is Ron Torn yeah, and one of them, the first one of them is brilliant, and then two downwards they get progressively worse. But I enjoy them like they're yeah. just entertaining. Like well, we'll have to do we'll, we'll have to do a show on on that series at some what point. What a series! I fucking yeah. love that series. And I'm sure you'll come on, won't you? And do it with me. I will. I'll run it with you. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, we'll that we'll do that in the future actually. But back to now. So it's back to you, isn't it? Uh, yeah. So what have we got? Two left. Two left. Right. Well, my number one is staying number one. So I'm going to go with The Lost Boys as two. Right, okay. And as, before we do that then, was your number one my number two? Oh, no. Has it got a number in the name? It does. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I'll tell you what my number one was now. So we can talk about number the, that one together. Yeah. So you go with your one, you go first, and then yeah. We wait. I've gone with the last boys. Right. 
great film. I don't know. I don't know why this movie stands out so much to me. I hated it growing up when it was on. Did you? Oh, I hated it. It wasn't until I turned about sixteen or seventeen and I watched it again. I was like, man, this is quality. Very good. Very Kiefer good. Sutherland, Corey Feldman, um, like it's, it's just quality. The the Frog Brothers are brilliant. I love them. Yeah. yeah. Like I don't know if the movie would have worked as well without them. No. But uh, isn't the cast uh, when you think about it, two young fellas trying to fight fucking vampires? Like. Yeah, instead they were trying to fight fucking sex predators. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Yeah. And then I like uh, that. I like that reveal that yeah, you know the outfit was the the kind of head vampire as well. Yeah, I, you could you could see it coming after a little while. Yeah. But uh, David Patrick was brilliant in this, or Jason Patrick. Jason Patrick. Yeah. yeah. As uh, as Michael. Michael. Yeah. They yeah. always go with David and Michael and all that in these yeah. kind of films. Angels. <laughs> True, actually. Yeah. But uh, like some of the scenes in this, where you see them jumping down off the, the train tracks or in between the train tracks and all, yeah. And the, the soundtrack, I, I think a lot of this, me falling back in love with this movie, came from the soundtrack. The soundtrack. Yeah, they have great. a lot of the door. They have a lot of the doors in it. Yeah. And the doors yeah. would be my favorite band. Wow, I didn't know that. But, yeah. One of my favorites too. Class. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The soundtrack is, is class and. There's certain films like that that are more famous for the soundtrack than the film. Yeah, um, like the, I think the last boy is it, it doesn't get as much love as it deserves. Yeah, I don't, don't, maybe maybe not from I suppose from diehard horror fans maybe, but yeah. I mean a lot of us we would have been young enough when that came out first. So, like I, that, I wasn't even born. Well, there you go. I was, but. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like, but I remember it being a, a, a cool little film. I, ne- I never disliked it or anything. You know I mean, yeah. um, I just thought it was a cool little film. And uh, like that, Kiefer Sutherland plays a deadly vampire. Oh, he's so good, isn't he? As mm. David. Yeah. And then the girl, I can't remember her name in it. The one that's, yeah, where he's falling in love with her. Michael's falling in love with her. And you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, um, you go. <laughs> I love, is it, was there a part where they. They had just torn Michael. Uh, they Michael was the the good fella, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And he, they're all look. He's, they're all looking at him from. They're hanging upside down. Come with us, Michael. Yeah. Brilliant. I love that. Yeah. No, no. Sorry. The come with us is when they're jumping <laughs> off the bridge. Off the bridge. That's... Yeah. Uh, and he's like one of us now. One of us. Yeah. Is when they're in the cave. They were all. They were all asleep. I think, weren't they? And then... Yeah. He wakes them up or something, I think. And then, I like, even, even the same when they're on the golf course and they're killing the lads. Mm. And that's when Michael first attacks a person. And you're like, yeah, brilliant. In the dark. It's a dark, dull kind of movie, even though it's set in San Fran or wherever yeah. it is. Yeah, it's it's dark in tone and it's dark in, uh, I suppose, the way it was filmed as well. Like, really. But again, that's not a movie that jumps straight in to let you know it's a vampire film. No. Because all you see is the missing people sign. Yeah. And you're like, oh, well, there's something going on. <laughs> it's too big of a, a scene to not show you at the start. Absolutely. Uh, um, yeah, great. For, I love that film. Yeah, yeah. It, I, it's I, just not in my top five, but I love it. Oh, it's as is, like my top five could change again if you ask me tomorrow. Yeah, and mine probably well, will. Actually, <laughs> one, one wouldn't change. My um, number one wouldn't either. Or my number two, which are. Yeah. You know, my gas my number one, my number one is not even on your list. Your number one is my number two. <laughs> yeah. Well, your number one was number five on my list at one stage. At one stage? Oh my yeah. god! I told you I changed it so I many know, times. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, we we move on from last boys. Yeah. Right. So as I said, we're going to be a bit unorthodox here. I'm going to say my number one now because my other one was your number one so we can talk about that together instead of talking about it twice separately you know yeah um so my other my favorite vampire film is nosferatu from what a, what a movie yes absolutely what? and go on what i was just gonna say what a movie yeah what got me was you know yourself i mean a lot of people don't give silent movies time and especially nowadays but if, I, there's something I, about that I think this might be the only one that I probably would watch really no I, there's a couple now I've watched um, 
and my daughter is actually getting into watching the, the Silent Horror films with me now as well, which is great. Nice. Um, she, nice. Yeah, she's she's getting into a horror movies with me. It's great. So she she'll be on the show next. <laughs> yeah. Well, she watched Jaws and me did a night, for example. I know that's not horror per se, but she watched the. Uh, like she's seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre, she's seen American Werewolf in London, she's seen Predator, she's seen Terminator, you know, all the films I love. You watched uh, Nightmare on Elm Street with her there as well. That's right. Yeah, she loved yeah. it. So while I, while I was while I was locked outside my house. <laughs> oh God, yeah. Thankfully, Freddie didn't come for you that night. They never got me. <laughs> so this film, um, as we were saying, was there was a film made on this film. And on it's also list. on your list. <laughs> yeah, Shadow of the Vampire. Yeah. So, of course, it's it's about it, it. was a very different type of vampire. It was the first vampire. Was it the fourth? No, I think it was. There was one actually before it. Believe it or not, I can't remember would the name. Be, of it. Would have been the Universal Monsters. No. No, there was another one even before that, which was which was a silent film as well. And I only found yeah. that out recently. Uh, it was either before it or after it. But uh, Bram Stoker's estate, his wife, she okayed that one, but she wouldn't okay Nosferatu. So that's why they changed, changed him to Nosferatu. You know what I mean, which yeah, I yeah. think I think is better. Oh, they had to get away. The story had to change somewhat. You can't keep making the same story over and over. Yeah. No, I know at that time there might have only been one. Yeah. But how many times have they gone to the well now? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I mean, no, I don't think any of the Stokers are going to care because they're getting paid every time they use them. Yeah. But uh, there's only so many times you can go to it. Isn't it crazy though when you think about it that, that that was ordered to be destroyed? Every copy of that film was ordered to be destroyed. And that's for Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because the, like that, it went to court with the Stoker family, and they they wanted it to be destroyed. So a couple of copies of it were, you know, reels of it, like we'll say, survived. And someone found it then. I can't remember how long ago. And they they start throwing in a Blu-ray or sorry DVDs of it and videos and and so like every one that's out now is kind of copied off one or two of these ori- oh, original ones. It was Universal that released it out. Yeah. Um, because I was working an exhibition at the time, and I remember coming in when they remember they released the the 25th anniversary copies, yeah. all of them like the Blues Brothers now came with like the sleeves, the blue sleeves. Yeah. This came in. And of course, I had a. Uh, I was able to change the price on things. I had that. So I bought it for ninety nine cent. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, it's Brilliant. still. I still have it there, still in its blue sleeve and everything. Class. Yeah. Ah, it's it's amazing movie. Yeah, and, and like, as I says, it's probably the only silent movie I'll watch. Yeah, and that's I can understand that, you know. Yeah. But it's atmosphere, you know, and that, and, you, you, and I say that at least once. An episode. In every an episode, it's atmospheric. It, the, the atmosphere and for me is like even at that time when they'd feck all money really when you think about it and you know there was lot, very little in terms of materials for them to use for yeah. makeup and oh just like I mean Max Shrek looks just freaky as an Nosferatu like, I mean like there he is it's, there you know it's, <laughs> cra- it's crazy like yeah uh, absolutely. it's amazing what people could do with makeup then and even now you're looking at some of the makeup jobs going they were doing better jobs in the 80s, 70s, yeah. 60s, let alone the 20s. Like, Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, once they start tweaking things and messing around with things, they just they just, yeah. they just ruined it, you know? Like, Rick Baker, to me, is the be-all and end-all of, of horror, horror makeup effects, you know? Oh, I don't know. Tom Savini's definitely up there. He would be a very, very, very close second. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. He um like looking at what he done even for the, the remake of Dawn of the Dead and all mm. I know you're saying you don't like remakes, but that is a quality remake. It's a good remake. He, done, yeah. he was in he was in that yeah. for about ten seconds and That's I imagine true. he done all the makeup for it. Yeah, I would say so, yeah. yeah. He's, he just like, see he loves he just loves his craft. That's yeah. what I love about him. There's a there's a documentary, I think it's on Netflix or it's on Prime about him doing all the makeup for horror movies. Oh, okay. Yeah, it might be worth checking out for you. Absolutely. I'll it's check uh, it out. it's quality. Uh, yeah, I love it. Uh, I love it. I think it's Tons called Masters of Horror or something. Oh, I think, like, yeah, I think it's Masters started. of Horror or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I think I have it on my, I think I have it on the watch list actually. Believe it or not. Yeah, I watched it. I watched it one night. I was sitting here down here by myself, and uh, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna watch this. <laughs> uh, 
and it's ah, it's quality. It's like I watched the Nightmare on Elm Street one, the fucking six hour long one. Oh, geez. That came out on Netflix a couple of years ago. I was like, yeah. oh, yeah. Absolutely. Genius. Genius. <laughs> Cool, right, well, like I said, uh, we're got, well, I'm sure I'll do a, a full episode on that film at one point because... Of, oh, you'd that. have to, yeah. It's yeah. that good, you'd have to do it by itself. Yeah. So, this is just a synopsis. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So uh, your number one film and my number two film, but we're going to talk about it collectively, is... Twilight. <laughs> number, number three. <laughs> yeah, 30 no, Days a Night. 30 Days a Night. Oh, God, what a film. So now I rented this film out next year, and me and my best mate used to go over when we were working there. We used to rent five DVDs for a fiver for a week, wow. right? And we used to find the worst looking DVDs we could find and go with that. And this came out of it. Oh, wow. This came out of it, and Dog Soldiers came out of it. Wow, there you go. Yeah. That's, Two that's absolute result. gems. Why, but, why, uh, why isn't this film bigger than a like you know this was based on a comics series I did I did not know that yeah it, it I only a... found that out well I didn't I, I knew it now I know it now yeah but, but I, only, I only found out when the second one came out I didn't even look at the second one was that any good no no so that's why she's I in it huh she's in it oh is she again yeah yeah she's in it she's in it for like half an hour or something yeah wouldn't be interested no it's it's pretty poor yeah, as, as it a standalone, it's fantastic, you know. Oh, function. this, the only way you say atmosphere, this is the dullest, darkest yeah. atmosphere you'll get. Actually, the only other film I can ever think of that's really as atmospheric in terms of dull and dark and fucking chaotic was Texas Chainsaw. Yes, absolutely. And um, then again, I have a gripe with the end of that film as well. No, look, you do. And uh, we might talk about it on another show, actually. I might get yeah. you on for that. That might yeah. be a bit of crack. Um, but the atmosphere in this, the cast for this, like Josh Hartnett, uh, I think it just came off doing you know, 40 Days and 40 Nights, and he was a, a comic actor, action actor kind of thing to go into this. Uh, ben Foster was absolutely brilliant in this. He was the lead va- uh, vampire, wasn't he? No, he's the guy that ends up in prison. You know, the scout oh, they yeah, send in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he's like, they're coming. Yeah. I love yeah, that yeah. When, when, when they actually finally come to the town and you yeah. see a man, he's cradling his face and then just... Yeah, it's it's thing. But like when you see this built up, again, another movie that you don't know is about vampires, really. Yeah. Um, But like imagine being in a town that goes dark for 30 days. Nah, that, that, I think you'd go a bit crazy you now if you stayed there and I have to say, you're I'd, in that I'd town. Be, I'd be asleep. Yeah, I'd like, probably give it a say, actually. But like... There, I, I think there, it's based off some kind of facts that the town goes dull for mm, I think whatever. it is yeah it's, up, it's the highest point of Alaska I yeah I don't know whether it goes pitch black but probably not but. what a premise to use the darkness for vampires yeah now there you go there's originality that's what yeah. I love original and again maybe it's too original for, for some people yeah well I, 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 I can't really even remember this coming out I no, remember just, I, as I said, I picked it up and actually didn't think it looked, it was a terrible DV, looking DVD box. Yeah. No, I, I, I missed it when it came out, believe it or not. But if, any chance I get to watch it now, I will watch it. I love it. I, so I watch this probably at least once a year. Yeah. I'd be the same. Um, but this is where we were saying, this is where you want your vampires, filthy animals. This, for not, me... Not caring. Yeah. Was the perfect iteration of a vampire. Talking yeah. in a different language, in an, an ancient language no one knows, screeching. I actually know. thought they were talking in Russian, to be honest. <laughs> it could have been, but <laughs> it's all Greek to me, you know. Yeah. But um, the whole, like, just in the way their eyes are black and... Oh, yeah, that's that's quality. cool, like, you know, yeah. and, and, they're, and they're all kind of real powerful, real super powerful, like, you know. And it's not, and it's, they're smart as well. Yeah. It's not, yeah. and there's not this whole you have to invite them in bullshit. No, now that that works for some movies, which yeah. is fine. But not this. But this thing, they're diving through windows and doors, and ah, oh, it's brilliant. Yeah, it's it, as Absolutely. I said, it's like a it's like a, a disease. Yeah, and that's the way. Look, I mean, think about it. If somebody bit you, you would get some sort of a fucking disease after them. So that's the way I think that a vampire yeah. should be like a zombie type thing but just the different different mechanics you know I had a I had an air of 28 days later about it didn't I 
Yeah. That kind of vicious yeah. attacking kind of way. Yeah. But like it's it's raw attack because like there's not just them pulling you over and biting you in the neck. Mm-hmm. They're throwing punches, they're swinging scrapes, they're kicks. Yeah. They're yeah. vicious. And he's the lead vampire is just cool. He's freaky. Yeah, he he's just like, he's pale white. Yeah. And black eyes. And then it, and it's big long nails not, now. Yeah, they're not they're not fangs. So to speak, no, they're they're, they're all filed down and yeah, they're like daggers uh, or something. Yeah, uh, brilliant. But uh, I think jo- that this was Josh Hartnett's best performance of his career, yeah. I think. And he was brilliant in actually. Yeah, you know, but um, what a film! What a film, actually. And we've we've compiled a good old list there, I think. Some good vampire movies. If you haven't seen them, check them out. Yeah, and an honourable mention for me would be well, we'll say interview with the vampire because everyone loves that. But uh, and it's not a film per se. It, well, it was. It was a TV film, Salem's Lot. You ever see idea. Salem's Lot? Ma- made for TV movie. Yeah, same yeah. as the way it the clown was. Yeah. Yeah, but here's what I'm, yeah. I'm going to say: uh, the vampire in that uh, Court Barlow is based. Well, looks wise, he's based on Nosferatu, but he's cool, like you know. I haven't um, seen that in a long time. No, it's a long time. But again, it's like the original it. Tim Curry yeah. was amazing, but the rest of the film for me was poor. Same with this pet uh sorry, uh, uh the film was poor, but the character was cool, you know? Yeah. And I, then, I actually I I've seen it, I know I've seen it at least once. I just yeah. can't really remember. I've seen that many of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think there's a few, like, I had two on the list that I put in and taken out, and one is a remake of the other one. Uh-huh. So I had Let let Me In. Oh, Let the Right One In. Yeah. I couldn't pick which one I liked more. I preferred the Swedish one. So. Yeah, I, I lean towards that. Yeah. Um, But sometimes the American one's just easier to watch because it's not so close. <laughs> and I, I think but, I like watch. I liked the... the, the Kind of when you you see a woman attacking in the Swedish yeah. one, she's vicious. Yeah, yeah, and that's. But uh, that's another one of them movies that you didn't expect it to be like that. No, and yeah. and they and it's original. There you go. Yeah, but it, like the, I enjoy it, like, even as it says you don't really like remakes, but that's another enjoyable remake. Yeah, yeah, no, that's one of the few. Yeah, and, and but I always I always find it funny that they remake modern films so so soon. Oh yeah. It's crazy and horrors as well. Like it's just like why do that? Like, sure, there's before. talks now that there's a new Poltergeist being remade again, and they only <sighs> remade it about five years ago. Like, why? There's no point. Yeah, the first one reached the level that it's going to reach. Yeah, but actually, the one that really annoyed me was Cabin Fever. But they're remaking that, are they? No, do you remember they ma- made Cabin Fever when Eli Roth on it? Yeah, yeah. They made a remake of that. Which is scene for scene, with just different actors in it. Why did he do that? Did he did he direct it as well? No, <laughs> but it's it's literally scene for scene, like even to the scene where you won't shave in her legs. That, that's that's like, just pointless, and that's that's money that could have been spent better. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like Cabin Fever one was brilliant, mm. uh, and then two and three and seven and whatever mm. to I've just kind of given up. But uh, yeah. no, there's things like that, but. As you said, this just running out of ideas now. That's it. Well, that's it. But like, um, I think we'll end up tonight now with it. That was a really good uh, way to finish up with 30 Days a Night, I think. You know? Oh, yeah. I think I'm going to watch that now. I think it's yeah, on Netflix. I think I'm going to watch it as well. <laughs> you know? For fuck's sake. There's me yeah. thinking, I'll go to bed after an hour or two. Be grand. Sorry, it's my nope. fault for keeping you up. <laughs> yeah. You can ring my boss and be like, yeah, he's not coming in tomorrow. Why? He stayed up all night watching horror watching movies horror again. Movies. Yeah, and they'll be like, again, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> listen, Greg, it's been deadly having you on the show. I presume you'll come back on, won't you? Ah, sure. Whenever you need me. I'll, I'll twist your arm. <laughs> we normally do slab ratings on this, but because we were talking about multiple films, um, we'll probably put the slab ratings on the description. I'll put them down in the description later on. So, uh until the next time, until the next time, Greg, adios, and everyone else. The same.
<laughs> Everyone else, we are out of here. Thanks again for tuning in to On The Slab on the DPN. And don't forget to check out Retrotainment with, with Greg and Ted. When do you use be on every what? We have a, a slot every Saturday at 2 o'clock. Uh, we've one going up. I won't reveal to you which one is going up this week. But I will let you know that there will be two episodes next week. Right, cool. We look special forward to that. Edi- another special edition for July. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Right, dude, we're out of here. Take care, man. Look. See you later.